Summon Raging Spirits, one of the most active playstyles in the game when it comes to the minions. If you want a bunch of little fiery headbangers that seek and destroy your enemies, then look no further. Hey guys, Big Ducks here, and welcome to the Build Showcase. This is a series where I take interesting builds that maybe didn't check all of the boxes needed for a full build guide because maybe not all players could use it or it's too expensive, but you know, I still wanted to show you guys what the build's about. Now, Summon Raging Spirits really almost did make it there. It's really close to having everything that it needs. It can do most of the content on the game for pretty cheap, but the problem is if you want to get that really, really high tier content like Awakener 8 Sirius or Uber Elder, you're really going to need to invest a little bit more into the build and invest a little bit more in getting better at the play because there's a lot of buttons to press. That being said, it's still a fun build, so you should probably try it out. Now remember guys, if you enjoy my content, make sure to like this video so that more people can see it. And also, consider subscribing for more content similar to this. And last but not least, if you want to directly support me and what I do and help me get more videos out, consider joining the flock with the button down below that says join. It gets you some cool perks like a badge next to your name in the comments, as well as some other interesting things that you should check out down below. Now without further ado, let's get into the guy. Alright guys, so this is Big Duck's Energy, a Summon Raging Spirits Necromancer, it uses a bunch of auras, uses some specters as well as a Carrion Golem, and it's a full cold conversion, elemental damage Summon Raging Spirits build. As always, there are going to be timestamps down below this video in the description that you can find for each of the different sections of the video. You can jump to whichever portion you like if you want more information about the build, you want to see it in action, or anything else. Without further ado, let's get into a map to begin with. This is a build showcase, so I kind of just want to give you guys an idea of the build itself. I'm not going to go super in depth with this. We're just going to show off the build a little bit. So this is a 16 tier insane keep alleyways map. We're going to be running in Einhar. We're going to be running infused anarchy. This gives us 12 additional rogue exiles. So let's take a look at this. This is T16 and we are on Awakener 8. So keep that in mind. That means that bosses are going to have a ton more life. The map is going to be about as difficult as it can get. So this is a T16 map. Um, we've got some decent modifiers on here. Vulnerability, physical damage reduction, less chance to block, but nothing too crazy on it. Now this build does perform pretty well in just maps in general. Um, you don't have to worry too much about that. It's relatively safe. You've got some good defensive mechanics on it. You've got some good offensives on it. You do have to press quite a few buttons and we're going to start seeing this ridiculous amount of rogue exiles here soon. But there is a lot of button pressage on this build compared to maybe some other minion builds that you've had to play before, like spin to win ones and all kinds of other stuff like that. But the standard play style of this build is you summon a bunch of summon raging spirits, you hit them with an arc to reduce the damage that they do, you wait for Einhar to actually capture the beast because he takes like five hours, you keep your buffs up, and that's pretty much it. There's not really much else to say about the build. It is, like I said, relatively safe. You've got the defensive mechanics of Enduring Cry as well as Bone Armor. Something interesting about Bone Armor is that it does make you immune to bleed. So it makes all of your minions remove bleeds off of them. It makes you remove bleeds off of them. So it is a pretty nice, uh, nice defensive tool that you can get along with your Enduring Cry. Now I'll show you guys this Legion Stone here because it should be kind of interesting. This is one of the major problems with the build is that the AoE Giant Clear is not too great just because most of the damage is centralized around the fact that you're going to have all of your minions attacking similar nearby things, right? So it's kind of hard to get them to like AoE clear entire maps. Maybe it's not going to be as good as say like certain Spectre builds or things like that. They just don't have that kind of giant AoE clear. It's not going to be as good as say like a Redemption Sentries Spectre build, but you know, it doesn't always have to be the best build. You can just kind of play whatever you find fun, right? I said this quite a few times, but I, I value fun over most other things in this game, and this build's fun to me. So going from this, we're going to fast forward to the boss. It shouldn't be too far away here, but we'll jump to there in just a moment. All right, so the boss is right around the corner here. Now, one thing about this build is that if you really do want to get the most single target damage out of it, I would say that you want to swap out your melee splash for another damage gem, right? Which I'm using elemental damage with attacks. I'm actually going to show you guys the damage with elemental attacks so that you can see kind of what the build is capable of. Um, the single target damage isn't amazing, right? It's not the best in the game by any means, but whenever you're doing a very difficult boss like Cirrus or um, one of the guardians or something like that, I would definitely recommend that you swap out to the single target setup. So let's get into here. You're basically just going to summon all your spirits. You're going to keep them cursed. You're going to keep your bone offering up. And that's pretty much it. Just keep them cursed. Keep the spirits out. And they'll do pretty decent damage, right? Like, he died relatively quickly. The build does a couple million DPS when he got everything going. It's not too bad. 
Not going to be the most ball-busting DPS that you can possibly get, but you got a bunch of little headbangers here that are going to do, uh, do a good enough job. So I want to remind everybody that before we talk about any of the items and stuff in the build, we're just going to go over this very briefly because this isn't a full build guide, um, but there is still going to be a pay spin. It's going to be linked down below for Path of Building. It's going to have most of the information that you need for the build. Should I answer most of your questions, it'll give you some leveling trees and all that kind of good stuff. So go check that out. It's down in the description below. And let's talk about the build itself. So first thing, we are necromancer right this ascendancy is super overpowered this is the main reason why any of the minion builds are actually as strong as they are i would say that the first point that you should get really depends on what you want to do now this point over here commander of darkness is really strong gives you a bunch of resistances but once you're able to get away from using this i heavily recommend you go towards bone barrier however first two points in my opinion are going to be one of two things either you're going to go for mistress of sacrifice for the increased minion duration or and and also being able to use offerings to make yourself and your minions attack faster. Leveling up, you'd probably use Flesh Offering for this, or you can immediately go down here towards Mindless Aggression, grab the Movement Speed, Damage, and Attack, and Cast Speed, and then grab Unnatural Strength. This is a huge damage buff. It gives plus two to level of all minion skill gems. That means it gives plus two levels to your Spectres, your Carrying Golems, and your Summon Raging Spirits. My personal suggestion for the average player is go here to Mindless Aggression, then to Unnatural Strength, then grab Mistress of Sacrifice, and initially, while you still need Resist, come and grab Commander of Darkness, and then later on transition into Bone Barrier once your Resists are set. Pretty much it for the Ascendancy. As for the tree itself, this is a very, very straightforward tree, right? The things that you're looking for are some good minion duration nodes, some life, and some aura nodes. That is almost all that this build goes for. So. We're gonna come out through here. This is just the most efficient path to get over to the left side of the tree. We don't need anything from this side. We're gonna anoint this over here later. But you come out, you grab some minion duration. This is really going to help you with keeping your summon raging spirits alive. It gives them a chance to refresh their duration when they hit a unique enemy. It also just gives you some minion duration. This is one of the first nodes that you should go for. And then also grab some regeneration and some life here. Come up to here, grab some life and chaos resist. You can come down here, skip these immediately at first because you're not going to need them for the auras grab this Righteous Army node. You can fill out these nodes early on, maybe before you have the Cluster Jewels. Fill out these nodes here, come down, Life. You can use this block Staff nodes here if you're using a Staff. If you're just using a Wand and a Shield or something, ignore those early on come down, you're gonna come over here and you're gonna grab Glancing Blows as well as all of this life. Glancing Blows is super strong. While this is still on the tree, where it is and not nerfed from its current iteration, use this thing all the time, it's so powerful. Blocks remove all damage and then this only takes it half of the way. So you're gonna have a doubled chance to block and you're only gonna take 50% of the damage from the blocked hit. Then you can come up into here, Grave Pact and these nodes right here are very strong. They give you all of the accuracy that you need for the build as well as some damage. Come up here, grab some life. Come up here, grab some life. Come over here, grab some life, some life, some life, and then call to arms. This is gonna allow us to use our Enduring Cry instantly. You should pick up Enduring Cry very early. This is a very, very powerful skill. You should use it on most of your builds. It doesn't matter what build you're playing. Uh, any life build, you should be picking up Enduring Cry. That's it for the tree. Pick up Jewel Sockets as you obtain good jewels. Life, Resists, and Minion Damage nodes are what you're looking for on here. The node that says Minions deal 17% increased damage if you've used a Minion skill recently, that might modifier is super powerful you should get it on like all of your jewels if you can i've got it on pretty much all of mine and then added damage is also good that's pretty much it for the skill tree you can see that i do have this anointed right now for mana issues but you can get this anoint ravenous horde it's a lot cheaper it doesn't require a golden oil this is a lot more damage it's going to give your minions onslaught when they get kills you can use mind over matter we'll talk about that later when we're in the gear now that's pretty much it for the skill tree let's talk about the gear itself this gear is not fully optimized on my character itself you'll see a little bit better options in the actual path of building but for a weapon we're using femurs of the saints this gives us plus two to socketed minion gems and some minion damage it also allows us to block attack damage with a staff this is going to work well with glancing blows you can replace this with a plus three fire staff and then just craft minion damage on it and it will be everything that this is but better right because it's also going to give you levels to like your anger if you're using anger and anything else 
A plus three fire staff with minion damage crafted on it would be really, really good. However, you can't even go as far as doing like a plus two, plus three staff, uh, elder staff with fortify on it. You'll see one of those in the path of building and that would be ridiculous for this build, right? Absolutely insane. As for the chest piece, we use Sack of Walls and S. Now we used to use Victorio's chest piece when we were initially trying this build because we were doing more auras. It wasn't as good, unfortunately. So I had one of these laying around that we found this league, so I swapped over to it. You do not need a six link here. The six link on Femur of the Saints is really cheap. It's like 50, 60 C right now. You don't need a six link on the Sack of Walls Nest. Only thing that you're worried about here is that reduced mana reservation. It gives the aspect of the avian buff increased effect, as well as aspect of the avian also grants avian's might and avian's flight to nearby allies. So what avian's might and avian's flight does, the one that you're worried about is avian's might, right? So what this gives you is that makes it so that Avian's Might, which gives a 10% chance to deal double damage, right? 10% chance to deal double damage for your minions and for you. It also gives that to your minions, so it doubles it. But the cool thing about this is that because you get increased aspect of the Avian buff effect and that, the Reddit math that I looked up says that this is a 40% more damage multiplier when you're using aspect of the Avian for your minions. That's, that's pretty nuts. It's also got some resistances. It's also got some attributes on it. Uh, Sack of Walls, really good chess piece. It can be kind of expensive early in the league, but once you get later on, it really isn't. And you don't even need a six link for it. Devouring Diadem was a late addition to the build. This is something that chat kind of suggested that I use because when we swapped off of the Victorio's chess piece, we needed some more mana reservation uh, reduction. And this gives that, right? It gives 20% reduced mana reservation for any socketed gems. And it also gives plus one to the level of the gems, which makes Enlightened work much better. We use a bunch of auras in here. We'll talk about the skills in a little bit. This also does give us some recovery through Feast of Flesh. You can actually just pop down Desecrates and the helmet will eat them occasionally. You'll see it here happen in a second. When it eats them, Feast of Flesh, what that does is it gives you a recovery of life, energy shield, and mana, all three of those. So this is some cool recovery. If you're on a boss, you can just pop down some Desecrates and as you're fighting and doing everything, it'll pick those up for you. It does have the alternate side effect of if you're trying to summon your specters off of your Desecrate, you're gonna be trying to summon them and it's gonna get rid of them. Just take the helmet off while you're doing it. Uh, someone in chat says you can slot Spell Echo into it and it'll stop doing it. Um, but yeah, that's that, it's kind of annoying, but you kind of have to deal with it. This also gives us Eldritch Battery, which makes our Energy Shield protect our mana. This is the way that makes it so it's very, very easy for us to cast. That's the main reason that we swapped into it. Other than that, we use Triad's Grip. This is the damage conversion of the build. It's a full cold Summon Raging Spirits build. We have to use four green slots so we can 100% convert to cold damage. You can get these four green slots by using the bench to craft two green and then doing two slot, three slot, three slot, four slot, back and forth until you get the correct colors. If you're still in Harvest League, just use Harvest Crafting to get the colors. It's much easier that way. Because these colors are green, it does affect our gems. Once again, we'll talk about that in a little bit. So next is Darkness Enthroned. You don't have to use this spell, but if you got a bunch of these really cool life and minion damage, if you summon a minion recently, these are pretty solid. You can pop them into this belt and get 75% increased effect out of it. Super good belt. Alternatively, just use like a normal Stygian Vice or like a life belt or something with some good stats and resists on it and then boots you're just looking for move speed resist and life that's pretty much it now keep in mind that most of the life is going to come from these items here right you don't get life from your weapon you don't get life from your helmet you don't get life from your chest piece and you don't get life from your your gloves so all of the life of the build is going to have to come from this stuff so keep that in mind life is important rings this is where i put my aspect of the avian life and resistance stats life and resistance stats. And then on the amulet, this amulet's not ideal, it's just what I had. Ideally, you would want to get a plus one, plus one amulet. You'd want to get a plus one to fire gems and a plus one to intelligence gems. That would be ideal in this slot, plus some life and some resists. For the flask, we use a quicksilver flask, we use a quartz flask, a basalt flask, and a granite flask. This is how we get most of our physical damage reduction as well as through bone armor. I would say that it'd probably be good to get a animated life flask just to keep your specters alive a little bit better, but you don't have to. This gives us a ton of defenses. It also is our source of curse immunity, freeze immunity, and bleed immunity, as well as the bleed immunity from bone armor. That's it for the items. Let's talk about the actual skills themselves. So skill-wise, this is a minion build, so you can expect to be very, very tight on slots. So initially we're going to be using Summon Raging Spirit as our main summon. We're going to be using Raise Specters as an additional summon and also a Carrion Golem. All of these are super important. You can add in a um, Animated Guardian if you want to, if you really want to stretch the slot super thin, but Animated Guardian requires you to have a bunch of items. Um, I don't personally recommend it, but it is a ton of damage. Keep that in mind. Um, I'll put some Animated Guardian items in the path of building. Talking about our links, let's first start with Summon Raging Spirit. So as I said in the 
map earlier, you'll see that we have elemental damage with attacks here. This is swapped out for melee splash while you're clearing. So I'm going to go at this as if we are doing clearing, okay? So swap out that melee splash for elemental damage with attacks or damage on full life if you want to. Summon Raging Spirits, this benefits heavily from actual gem levels. So plus two from items, plus two from our global modifiers. This would be even better with the correct amulet and the correct staff. We use Multi-Strike because we are a added damage build as well as a cold conversion build. Multi-Strike is a ton of damage on minions because they actually go through and use all of the attacks. So they will always use the attack and repeat it as many times as they can. So this is really good. Melee Splash is really important for the actual clear of the build. This just allows you to clear because it gives the attacks of the minions splash. There's not much to this. It just makes them splash. Awakened Melee Physical Damage is actually really important. Now you don't have to have Awakened Melee Fizz Damage. You could just use normal Melee Fizz, but Awakened Melee Fizz gives this 10% chance to intimidate enemies for four seconds on hit that is a 10 percent more damage multiplier for attacks really really powerful unleash is the main way that we actually keep all of our minions up you'll notice that i only have to cast every once in a while because with unleash it stacks up stacks of this spell so right when i cast it it'll cast four of them instead of one right this is the way that we actually keep all of our stacks of the spell up it's the only realistic way that you're going to be able to keep 20 of these spirits up at any given time without using like spell echo or something else terrible unleash is pretty good and then the last slot is mini damage just more damage just a very simple thing to slot in now let's talk about our auras next so we use anger hatred enlighten and purity of elements now hatred is absolutely required for the build you can't substitute this one out unless you completely change the build anger you could probably swap this out for summon skitterbots if you wanted to and then link it to like bone chiller or something like that because we're mostly cold damage but i'm using anger at the moment because it's just what i have summon skitterbots is probably better to be honest with you the the helmet already had these links in it so i'm just using the anger you could probably use summon skitterbots the enlightened gem gets plus one from our helmet this allows us to have a level four enlightened and then we use purity of elements purity of elements is just giving us a buffer of resist for us and for our minions, you can see that our resists are pretty good here. If we turn off Purity of Elements, they're not so good. It just makes the gearing a little bit easier. You don't have to use Purity of Elements. You could just use anything else that you wanted. Um, you could probably just swap out Purity of Elements for Skitterbots if you wanted to use that and maybe use Anger and Skitterbots. I don't know, whatever you'd like to do. For our actual links for our Spectre, we're using Ray's Spectre, Blood Magic, Minion Life, and then we also have Carrying Golem in this link. Links are kind of difficult in this build. You're gonna have to shift them around as best you can, but we need the Minion Life and we need the Blood Magic for our Ray's Spectre because our little buddies here will not cast their Frenzy Charge generation unless they're linked to Blood Magic. They've got a very low amount of mana. Blood Magic makes them cast it much more often. Summon Carrium Golem gives us some extra physical damage for our non-Golem minions. It's just a good Golem to have around. We also do have Bone Offering and Convocation in here. Bone Offering gives us a source of block for us and our minions and also some recovery for our minions. This keeps them alive. And we also do have Convocation just to keep our minions near us at any given time, to pull them out of like enemy damage spells and to just give them a bit of regeneration. Convocation is really good. Now our gloves kind of limit the movement skill that we can use because we got to make use of these green slots somehow, right? So our movement skill is actually dash linked with second win. And that is because we need to use those green slots. If you're not going to slot these gems into here, Flame Dash is far superior. Dash, I, I do not like it as much. Um, it is good, but mm, not my favorite. We also use Desecrate. This is a way for us to get our offerings going, as well as a way for us to be able to summon our specters if they die. I'm using a portal gem because I'm lazy. And our last links are going to be Enduring Cry. This is just an easy add-in to the build to give you a bunch of regeneration. And then we're going to be using Arc, Elemental Weakness, and Curse on Hit. Now, this works out well with our Elemental Equilibrium. Our minions do all fire and cold damage, and the Arc is only hitting for lightning damage. So that means that when we're hitting the enemies, they are gaining less resistances to fire and cold, which is the main kind of damage that we do. You could swap out Arc with um, Stormbrand if you wanted something easier for bosses. I prefer Arc just because it hits more enemies at once. This also curses with elemental hit weakness, causing enemies to have a little bit less elemental resistances once again. That is pretty much it for the skills itself. Pretty much it for the build itself. It is a complicated build when you're actually in it. You've got a full rotation of spells that you have to use. You have to keep up Bone Offering. You have to keep up your Summon Raging Spirits. You have to keep 
recalling your minions back to you, keep up endurance charges, you have to spawn desecrate, do the thing, you have to use the, the zap on the enemies to keep the curses on them and everything. So if you want to build that skill level does matter, this might be the one for you. And that's Summon Raging Spirits, a really fun build that maybe doesn't check all of the boxes that I needed to make a full build guide for it. I wouldn't recommend it for every single player, but it is still a really, really fun build. I recommend that you try it if you like minion builds and you want something a little bit more active. So remember to like the video if you enjoyed it, subscribe to the YouTube channel for more content similar to this, and stay safe out there in your class, and I'll see you guys in the next video.